The vision of the outreach program at the Gulf Coast Research Lab is to have a community that makes good, solid decisions based on science. So the goal of all of our education and outreach programs is to translate the science that's going on here and connect it to people's lives. The intent in the end is to have our community be better stewards of the environment. The Coast Team is about finding scientific answers to questions about the oil spill. For me, it's about the education and, and the science of the ecology. Learning. It's about growth. It's about development. It's about the scientific method. Learning the information and passing it on to fellow captains. So I think this project is a project of example that could help bridge the gap between science and the community. It's really about the, the name of the program, the Community Outreach and Science Translation. After the oil spill, the people who were responding to the oil spill needed information. We didn't have this information and we needed science to get this information. Um, at the same time, the people who live on the Gulf Coast really needed to know what was going on. My first uh, concern is how is this going to affect you know, my patients? Uh, not just my patients, but my community members, but not just my community members, but also my family members, because, uh, you know, we live in this uh, community that is being affected by this oil spill. Is it going to stay consolidated inside the Gulf of Mexico, or could it actually follow the loop current out into the Atlantic? I've heard a lot of people talk about food, um, and that's definitely a concern for me, but I think mainly for me the environment, because it has completely changed everything. Well, I think my concerns have to do with the habitat and how the, the species will be affected into the future, and the quality of the water as well. As someone with children, I'm concerned about um, playing in the water, um, eating things from the water. Well, I think my concern is uh, more on the public perception of the spill. Well, I was really uh, concerned about the uh, fisheries, how it would affect my fishing recreationally, and then I'm an aspiring charter boat captain, so where was that gonna be at 10 years down the road? our livelihoods, right? Can we continue to go out and fish, right? If parts of the Gulf is closed, right? And um, what is happening out there? What are some of the, um, you know, what are the long-term, the short-term, mid-term, and long-term, you know, impacts? And you can see eye spots and stuff like that. Our mission for the Coast Project is to teach concerned citizens how science is helping us understand the complex effects of the oil spill on the ecosystem. And they're considered a keystone species. And, and that's an animal that plays a critical role in maintaining the whole structure of the ecosystem. The specific research project that we're focusing on is a project to look at how oil, dispersed oil, and dispersant affect the way that different crustaceans move through their life stages. So we're looking at one specific example of the type of research that's going on right now. That is going to provide people with an awareness of how science works. Well, the dispersants are one of the uh, unanswered questions, I think. Um, at the time of the oil spill, it wasn't released what was in the dispersants. Even now, there's still some question of how mind, many and what kind of dispersants and were used. If you put a dispersant on it, the dispersant includes a surfactant, which has an end that connects to the oil and an end that connects to water. I think that there's a lot of pressure on science right now to come up with these really specific hard answers very quickly. And I think it's really valuable for the community to understand that these things take a long time and that you can't just, you know, call up the EPA and ask if, you know, your food is safe to eat necessarily because we don't know all the effects and the long-term effects. So I guess just to sort of relieve the pressure on science a little bit and have the community understand that we're working really hard and there's certain things needed and funding needed and maybe it will inspire someone to, you know, donate to a research project. Um, that, that's what I'm really hoping for. Our volunteer citizen scientists conducted all of the work of research scientists. They collected and identified specimens. And we're going to do some experiments with them examined them through microscopes yeah, they're little, like, circular dots inside. and attended lectures that revealed the process of scientific study. Our scientists led the way. It has carcinogens. I mean, you get carcinogens produced when you burn oil. Dr. Dick Lee engaged our team on the behavior of oil in the ocean, the reasons for using dispersant, and its effect on grass shrimp. Grass shrimp live right, you know, close in the estuary there. 
they're, they're have to be pretty hardy to survive where they do. Harriet Perry described the life history of the blue crab, explaining its changing vulnerability to oil at stages from egg to adult. The, the male will actually guard the female while she's, she's a soft shell crab and carry her, mate with her, and then carry her until her shell hardens and she can defend herself again. Jim Franks described his observations of oil and sargassum near the loop current, where spawning bluefin tuna larvae might have been exposed to oil. These are called eddies, they're circulation features. Uh, and this is a great place for fish to spawn and it's where young fish grow up. A lot of nutrients are in these places. It's an upwelling, it's a highly productive habitat. While cruising aboard our research vessel, Tom McElwain, we'll collect a water sample. We'll collect a sample of Necton using this otter trawl. We will collect a plankton sample with a smaller net. The team conducted hands-on collection of water, mud, and organisms of the estuary. First thing here is uh, this is called an Atlantic stingray. If this was a male, it would have two finger-like structures hanging off the end here. So with this, we're measuring dissolved oxygen. This experience helped them understand how to assess the health of the Mississippi Sound. Yeah, we're going to do all of our mix in here. They're going to fill the titration tube up to 20 milliliters. Being on the water also enhanced their appreciation for a healthy marine environment. I have to um, talk about that in terms of an interactive at our table. With their newfound knowledge, the citizen scientists prepared to present their work. They formed teams to craft their message to the public in downtown Ocean Springs at the Mary C. O'Keefe Center just weeks away. Uh, so we're gonna break it down. The top part will be all about oil. And then we're gonna break it down, basically the three subtitles on the top. And that first one's gonna be how oil affects ecosystems, sort of like what we saw today. So we're basically going back over some of the things that came in today's presentation about the very smallest parts of the food chain and how the dispersed oil gets into them. Our booth is um, targeting younger audiences um, since we're teachers. So it takes, you know, the last two presentations and waters it down. And what we're planning on doing is kind of giving everyone a preview or an overview of what this project's been all about. The big day arrived with a flurry of activity. There was a lot to do. Displays were built, tables were set, the teaching tools were prepared. The citizen scientists braced for face-to-face -face discussion with members of the public. When events like an oil spill happen, the baseline data exists. So we can say, hey, in 2009, this is what the shrimp population looked like. This is what the catch was. Another role is to of science is to prevent future spills. And inevitably, there's gonna be another spill. We're more dependent on oil than we've ever been. Most of you probably drove here. Most of you are probably wearing something that has plastic in it. Plastic is derived from oil. So what can you as consumers and individuals do to help prevent a future oil spill? Well, you can use less of oil products. And what the dispersant does is it makes it easier for those microbes to ingest the oil. And it also keeps the oil spread out within the water column to make it easier for it to degrade in the sun. Nó nói là cái cái dầu nó vô cái trứng, đấy, nó vô cái trứng. Um, it's easy when you're looking at 2020 hindsight. Oh, the rig is gone, so you get to make up some of the excuses why it's not here. When people ignore safety precautions, safety rules, safety regulations, or safety devices, when you ignore those, price is paid. And in this case, it was a horrible price. So if you watch it, the oil will eventually start sinking to the bottom. Oh, oh, there it is. Yeah, I see it. Yes, that's a basilaria. See how it folds back up on itself like a, what, one of those old folding rulers? You can write her name. Oh, is there something moving there? There sure is. Our coast members have answered a lot of the questions that they had when they came in. They'll have a lot more questions, but I think at least now they understand how science works and how long it takes science to address some of these questions. I think we've made a lasting impression.